Good night, good night, all. The Charmaine Road here, FIE's Junk New Rush. Feel it in your belly, folks. It's Junk New time, and we are upon a new season, and it, we are excited. I don't know about you, but I'm, I am excited that we have a new minister in the place. And be, on behalf of FIE's Junk New Rush team, my twin CEO, Brenton Burrell, my producer, Brighton Roll, my co-host, who should be with us shortly, Mr. Paparazzi, and Charles Gardner, our cameraman, Mr. Minister, we send our sincere congratulations to you. So now that that has been said and done, let's go to the minister. Minister, introduce yourself and, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me to appear on this very special platform. And, and, uh, and um, you know, John Kuno said this something that that's the only thing besides food you can really feel in your belly. And, and, I, and I like the theme that you're using. Um, this is a very special group. Because as we know, John Kuno is very important to us as a country. Um, and one of the things that the Bahamas was able to do that other countries didn't do um, was under UNESCO's Indigenous Cultural Heritage um, Act, the Bahamas was able to register Junkanoo as an Indigenous cultural art form. So we are secured um, under UNESCO with Junkanoo being under the ownership of the Bahamas. And why I say that is important, important is that Countries like Trinidad, Trinidad was famous for the steel plan, and they missed an opportunity to register the steel plan. And, and unfortunately, steel plan is, is registered under Japan as a part of their cultural heritage. So they missed the opportunity, but the Bahamas was really in, in a position for So we have a lock on Junkano the world over. Um, I wanna, wanna say thanks to all of the leaders who administration, great organizations, because of your time and your effort. And this is certainly a labor of love. And I, I oftentimes I, I sympathize with the, the leaders because I know what it is to go out there. You have to seed funding and you have to go out there and you have to secure funding. You have to secure branding. You're almost, almost in some instances, you feel like beggars, but on behalf of the group and on behalf of this country, you do what it takes, what is necessary. And it's indeed a labor of love. So to the, to the leaders, to the organization, to all of the volunteers, to the group members on behalf of the Bahamas government and the Bahamian people, let me say how much we appreciate you and how much we thank you. Um, John Kuno, to me was, I, I will say this. I first watched John Kuno on the radio growing up uh, in Waterkey, a small community of Waterkey. And we, we didn't have the television set, but my, my father used to turn on the radio all the time. And the first thing that captivated you was the, the sound, the music. And, and like, like Charmaine said just now, it's something that you could feel in your belly. So there was a connection even, even from the radio. And then when, you, when I got a chance to watch it on TV, and then uh, when I first went to Junkanoo in Nassau, I think it was around 19, believe it or not, not until like 1996. And to me, that was amazing. And from then, that impression um, on my life is something that I'll never, ever forget. Now, as we, as we have fun with Junkanoo, as we spread it around the world, it is now up to you. I challenge you to find ways now to monetize it, find ways that you can earn a living. Because the amount of time that you put into preparing costumes, the amount of time you put into practicing, the amount of time you put into performing, performing the amount of time that we, we, we have to find a way to export Junkanoo and export it in a tangible way, in a way where you can realize at the end of the day, the bottom line money in your pocket, that will make it even more sustainable. Because as you would know, 20 years ago, maybe the seed funding of $50,000 was sufficient. Nowadays, that is only scratching the surface. And that's why it's so difficult for you to be able to produce and express the way you would like to express. So again, 
when I look at the, 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 the costumes, when I look at the choreography, when I look at the performance, the sound, the, 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 the local genius or, the, or the, the spirit of the place, there's nothing in the world like that. And if we can be so creative at pulling out these, these uh, my goodness, how do I say it? You, you cannot compare the craft of John Kuno with anything in the world. If we can be so creative and, and producing these costumes, producing these lead pieces, synchronizing um, uh, choreography, why can't we really come together and figure out a way that we can monetize it, that we can make money from it? It is in you. The same way that the money is in there, how we feel the music and the spirit in your belly, there in your mind, there is a business side. So I challenge you to go beyond where you are right now. Because when it comes to creativity, I can't think of any other art form anywhere in the world that is creative. You know, would you produce out of crepe paper, out of cardboard boxes, crazy glue, uh, Elmer's glue, just, just the, 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 the regular paint, the feathers. There's nothing else like it in the whole world. My challenge to you is figure out a way, and I'm here to learn. You bring the ideas to me. Let me see how I can support, how we can bring it together, where we, we, we close this gap. Because the missing part, the missing part of this whole experience is how do we make money from it? How do we export it? How can we make it easier on you? At the end of the day, when you work on the job, after eight hours, you, you, you want overtime, that's money in your pocket. You put it in 24 seven. So I mean, I, th I thank you and I thank all of the group leaders. My challenge to you is how? Let me know what, what your thoughts are. And even in the face of, of, of the, the pandemic, we weren't able to have the parade. I'm sure by now you would have figured out some way to bring John Kundu to the people. Now, we, we have the vaccine, the first batch coming to the Bahamas tomorrow. And we hope over time, those persons, and again, it's voluntary. No one is forcing anyone to take the vaccine. But once we have the vaccine and we can open the country up, even before that, let's assume that we will be faced with this challenge again. Let's start thinking out of the box, as creative as we are, how we can bring John Kunu to the people in spite of whatever challenges we are faced with. So having said that, this is your meeting. I want to hear what you have to say, and let me see how I can support you moving forward. Thank you so much, Minister, for that introduction. And let me tell you how I came up with that feel it in your belly. And my thing is feel it in your belly. Notice the expression on my face. I, I, I get goosebumps every time I repeat that because many years ago, I was one of the persons, the deputy chairman of the parade management team. And my responsibility was for the overall running of the parade, but really to deal with the judges. And one of the things I always explained to them was, you have to feel this thing like you out there. You have to be able to put yourself in those performers and those junk rules position. So every time I see you doing a job to make them better, I want you to feel it. And what it does is the junk new spirit is a feeling. It's a spirit that comes from the pit of our stomachs. And so every time you hear that drum, I don't know if you guys heard the introduction of the music. When we first started, you heard the, the whistles and the drums. And so that's a call that is made to come to attention, to start, stand still and know your ancestors are awake and alive in you. And so that's how I came up with that, feel it in your belly. So that was something I was saying now for about 20 years. And when I started my show, I, I noticed that I repeatedly said that in many instances when I was speaking. And it became at the end of every show, a lot of persons would be saying that you have to say your saying. And so that's where I created that, that from. You feel it in your belly. Now the floor is now open. Um, people, we have a new minister here and he is ready to work with us. So we're gonna, we're gonna take your questions one by one. We want one person at a time to ask a question and for the rest of us to please keep our mics off so we can have good coordination and don't have too much feedback. So who has the first question? Wanna put the first question forward?
You all want me to pick? Okay, go ahead, Chancy. Unmute your mic. Okay, um, good night, everybody. Chancy Gray, Superstar Rockers. Um, this is for the for the minister. I heard you mention that um somewhat like Bahamas now has co uh, has copyrights on John Kudu, basically what you said. Yes, basically basic under under UNESCO, it's called UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage. Uh -huh. Um so again, like I said, Trinidad missed the opportunity to register um the steel pan as a part of their indigenous art form. But, but we, we are now in a position to register Junkanoo as an indigenous art form relative to the Bahamas. It will be tied under the Bahamas, under UNESCO's um, indigenous cultural uh, heritage, Intang intangible. It now becomes intangible outside of the Bahamas. Okay, so if you, if you can break it down to me how um, we can benefit from that, how, um, because you, you have uh, people shooting movies and everything, and they have John Canoe in it. You know, um, they'll come and take a picture of, take pictures or videos during the parades and all of that. How can we now benefit from that? Because, you know, some other people are making money off it. How can we benefit from that now? Well, well, like I said earlier, um, well, of course, you know, we now have copyright laws. And once it's registered, uh, as a part of our intangible cultural heritage. Again, there's a business side of it. Now, I don't have all of the answers. I can tell you that right now. I'm not gonna even pretend to have all of the answers, but your, your point is, is very valid and it's very good. And the, the, the challenge that I showed to you just now, threw it to you just now in terms of how to monetize it, again, that is a way that we can now monetize it also. If you wanna use it as cutaways in the movies, if you wanna use it on, on, um, on, on any art form, then yes. Of course, it's, it's a way now that every time they use it, because I'm sure even when I, whenever you watch a movie and you hear um, Bahaman, who let the dogs out, they, it's some money in their pocket. Yeah. So, so again, I will, I will have to do my research on that, but I think it just comes under the regular uh, copyright laws. Uh, once it's registered under the Bahamas uh, uh, Indigenous Cultural Heritage um, art form, then yes, we, we now have to figure out a way to lock it in and ensure that once we use it, the Bahamas benefits um, in, in some form or the other. Okay. Okay, we have a question from Angelique Bahamian Culture Online. She says, we need your support and endorsement for our plans. We have ways to monetize the Bahamas Junkaloo Art and Music Festival. And she also says, uh, are there going to be any grant opportunities for Junkaloo artists in, in 2021? Well, we, we are offering uh, small startup business grants uh, for um, the Small Business Development Center. Again, that could be a, 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 an offer that some young budding entrepreneur could put forth. And, and of course, producing the Junkano music, the Junkano dolls, the headpiece. I mean, we have people do it now. Um, when, when I met with, with this work with culture, the cultural department, um, someone, someone, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was Higgins, who said that during the pandemic, he created a happy, he posted it online and he got a sale for it somewhere over, over in Korea. And he got, he shipped it over there and he, and he was paid handsomely for it. So we, I'll see what I can do in terms of, of, of securing grant along that line. But yes, even, even selling it online, producing your pieces, putting it on the internet and selling it, Again, that's a way to, to generate revenue. But to answer your question earlier, yes, you have my full support. So however I can support, um, within reason, as I am able to, I still do it. Okay, we have another question. Kishley Smith, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Minister. Can you all hear me? Good evening, yes. Firstly, congratulations on your appointment as our new Minister of New Sports and Culture. I am Kishlane Smith, as you know, I am the co-chair of the National Junkanoo Committee. 
Um, from a Jungunu standpoint throughout the Bahamas, um, particularly from the family island standpoint, I know that we do have a lot of family islanders that are on, which is very good. I'm happy to see that the family islands are now being included in um, a lot of the initial discussions for whatever is taking place in the art of Jungunu. But having traveled throughout the Bahamas, I would like to see more attention drawn toward the family island to increase the um, marketing and also the administrative aspect on those islands. Uh, I know that there are some Grand Bahamian Jungunu groups that are here, but on some of the other islands, they're not staggered yet or, or structured yet in a way uh, similar to what we have here on New Providence. And um, many of the groups have said, or many of the islanders on those islands have said that their issues are that they just needed the guidance. So I would like to see the ministry, um, and I, I know it was done in the past, but for some reason it stopped. And so I would like to see the ministry rekindle its um, attention to assisting family islands, uh, family island Jankunu groups um, to one, um, formulating themselves into a body that can speak in one unified voice uh, for the betterment of the, the actual dynamics on that island, because each island is different. You have some islands where groups physically have to travel either by a boat or a plane to get to wherever the parade route is. And so it's the transporting aspects, the whole logistics is, you know, is an issue. And more importantly, I would like to see some initiatives where um, from a holistic standpoint that costumes are, are in government offices or, or some edifice or something of that sort is there. And it is a mandatory um, effect, similar to like a small museum that's on each island, which showcases um, the actual um, costumes. Maybe it could be something from inception to its, uh, to its completion, um, showing the historic aspect of from when a, a costume is thought of and then it's adorned on a paper and then, you know, it's just created and, and what is needed behind the creation of it. And so I'm happy to see that it is a good start because we begin with discussing, we begin with hearing what our issues are and moving forward. But I would like to see attention to the family island so that their voices could be heard as well. And then finally, um, well, two things before I go, um, but, I would like to see, more, similar to what we were talking about earlier about a Bahamas Games Jungunu, well, an Olympics of Jungunu, because I am sure that if we were really to have all of the Jungunu groups throughout the islands really participate in one overall parade where all islands are, are our representatives from all islands are there and participating, we will really begin to see how some of these new Providence groups <laughs> will really get something <laughs> because there we are gifted, we are talented and the talent is there throughout the Bahamas and not just here in New Providence. And then finally, what I would like to see um, through our initiative in the National Junkanoo Committee um, with Junior Junkanoo, uh, I, I am so appreciative of the fact that we've been afforded the opportunity to have been sponsored by Seoul Petroleum for over 32 years. And uh, they, their continuous contribution to Junior Junkanoo is insurmountable. We are very grateful to them. Um, but I would like to see uh, more Junkanoo, more of a fusion of Junkanoo culture in our school system. Um, Dr. Dwight Marshall and I, when we were first appointed, we visited the superintendents of schools to really understand from an educational standpoint, what are their uh, priorities in terms of um, their curriculum and, and what can happen. And I know that there were previous discussions in the past, but the only way that we can safeguard our culture is if we really educate our children as to why, what is Chankanu, where did it come from, where are we now, what are our plans of moving forward? And so I know I have a litness of, um, we, uh, we have a laundry list, um, but I'm just happy to see, I'm motivated to see that, uh, you know, there's some positivity and we're moving forward, but I would like to, to, to ask that in everything that we do, that we do ensure that the family islands are well represented. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh... Pastor Kishlan, she said like about this minister in closing, in closing five times. 
<laughs> I'm very Anglican. Thank you. <laughs> in closing, and finally, but no, you know, um, I totally agree. Your your point uh, is extremely valid. We have to go to Potter and we have to spread it beyond New Providence to um, a, a, an impactful level. Um, we do have a lot of those geniuses who are in Nassau. They are from Meguana. They are from Inago. They are from Cat Island. They are from Grand Bahama. Abaco, they're from Eleuther all over. So if we do uh, um, focus on developing the product, um, the family islands can certainly grow. And the la to your last point, Junior John Canoe, you need a strong feeder program. And the Junior John Canoe, what I see coming out of, out of, out of that uh, level um, is just phenomenal. I can see the future is bright. So we do need to really focus a lot more on developing Junkanoo countrywide, um, so that wherever you go, you have the same level. Because if a tourist come into Nassau and they see, you know, this knockout performance, and they go down to an island, uh, the, the, the small population there, we go into Junkanoo, and then this is watered down way, 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 way down. You know, the experience is different. Um, I like, I like the 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 thought too of the the evolution showing. So I mean, some sort of a museum showing the evolution. Of of Junkano. Um, that that speaks volume to how we would have grown over time. And I, I'm sure, you know, the the, the mm -hmm. pros like, the, pros like um, the, the master uh, guys who create these costumes, they're not going to show all of their trade secrets. I, I'm sure there's some tricks. I, I, you only mm -hmm. use the word tricks mm -hmm. uh, uh, loosely. I'm sure you have some skills that you don't want the whole world to see. But in the, in this basic mm -hmm. form. You certainly can see the evolution of Junkanoo. And, and again, this needs to be documented in our books. We need to have the Junkanoo Museum beyond New Providence. So yes, we must find a way to depopulate, to spread it out, to decentralize, and to build, not only in the family island, but let's build a strong junior Junkanoo segment that can flow into the B category, that can flow into the tribal group, the B category, and ultimately, into into the A group, so yes, your your points are extremely valid, and 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 um, uh, Charmaine, I'm I'm thinking that this this uh, broadcast is recorded, so that we can go and and we can we can pull information down to um, act on. It's being recorded, isn't it? Actually, we are live, Minister. We are live at present on Facebook and the other social media. Okay. So we are watching. I have another question for you. Have you finished, Kishlin? Yes, yes, I'm finished with Kishlin. And uh, thank you for your question, uh, Kishlin, and, and to Dr. Mark for supporting me during the swearing in. All righty. Okay, so we have Ms. Angelique again with another question, and she has some good questions. She said, the minister mentioned or suggested that John Canoe create something while we are in COVID. What is the possibility of the ministry financially supporting a John Canoe documentary with the to see what we produce about allowing us opportunities of recognizing John Canoe. I, I wasn't there a, um, a video documentary of production that was played on TV. I think who got robbed or something like that. I saw I saw pieces of it. There was a, doc, a documentary produced, but but again, we we as a government must find ways to produce uh, and, and to highlight and to showcase. Um, again, I'm a suggestion is out there even in the face of COVID-19, for, for the groups to just do neighborhood rush. You have a, you have a, a street in the neighborhood that's working the same day yard. You're not allowed to come out and, and, and to mix and mingle. So you have social distancing and, and the groups just rush past the neighborhood. Um, so so the, there, there are some things that, that again, as an organization, uh, you can put forth. Um, we have, but we have to bear in mind, we have to think safety first and foremost, protecting our people. But again, uh, we're hoping that persons will understand in, some in, uh, in most instances, um, do not be afraid of the vaccine, get as much information as you, as you want, as you need to get, uh, consult as much as, as necessary. But I know I am take, I'm gonna take the vaccine. I mean, it's, it's millions all over the world are taking it already, prove that it works. And I'm not here to convince you one way or the other, but as soon as we can, can, can lower the, the, the effect of COVID-19, the possibility could open up. But um, again, Angelique, to your question, we must find ways right now, even in the face of COVID-19, to keep the show going. The show must go on. 
Let's continue. All right, go ahead, Junior, and meet your mic, please. Um, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Okay, once again, congratulations, Minister, on your new appointment. I know you'll be the best man for the job and helping us to move forward with this culture. Well, just piggybacking on Kishlian, because she said a few things that I really wanted to say. You know, I was always for the Olympics of Junkanoo because I, I love to beat up on New Providence. You know, the hard mode boys. Us in Grand Bahama, we love to beat up on New Providence. But for, for a far long time, um, the leaders in Grand Bahama, we felt left out for years, for many years. I would say probably some 15 years. I believe the last time we really was concentrated on was around Algerton, Allen time, and a little bit of Charles Maynard before his passing. So my question to you is, you know, um, the family island, especially Grand Bahama, is, is really up there with John Canoe, especially the major, the major groups. But, you know, we don't really get the type of support from sponsorship like the major groups in Nassau. You know, we, we practically... Like you say, we be out there begging and trying to make it happen and putting on the best show ever. And, you know, for, for years, we, was, we were trying to get um, even just the seed money on par with NASA, with the A groups, and that, that never happened. And even with the prize money, you know, in, in Grand Bahama, you could win 12 categories and can't take home $20,000. And you don't spend $200,000 to produce these things, you know? And then lastly, um, the facilities in Grand Bahama, you know, we are not blessed. I believe uh, on, on all of the Bahamas, you know, all juggling was probably need their own home. You know, we need our own home where we could get comfortable, you know, have our museums, our cultural events, whatever we want to plan. But um Going around, finding um, um, buildings in Grand Bahama, everything is leaking. Everybody want to charge you this big rent. And it get discouraging trying to keep culture alive in Grand Bahama. So I want to ask you, um, what is the government plans to help some of these groups to find a home? You know, so we can continue to be in ambassadors to the country and keeping uh, um, members busy. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for your question, Father Nice. Um, there are several things to, to think about. When it comes to the individual sponsorship, the Bahamas government really have no control over that. And I would say this, the entire Bahamas is not really market driven. Um, New Providence is more market driven than Grand Bahama. So they have more sponsorship, they have more um, opportunities to go to the big companies, more of those that exist in, in, Grand, in New Providence in terms of advertising, in terms of, of, of branding, more of that exists in New Providence than anywhere else in the country. Now we have to find parity. We must make sure that there's balance across the board. When it comes to seed money, um, I do believe that we have to find a way to ensure that, that there's parity, that, that all groups are equally serviced. Now, I don't know, I don't know what areas that you would have been disenfranchised um, over the last 15 years, but I'll be, I'll be interested in you sharing that information with another group member, sharing that information with, with me so that we can bring it, we can bring it to the ministry and we can, we can right whatever wrong took place in the past. Because again, when it, when it comes to individual sponsorship, the government has no control over that. But when the government is giving out government money, then that's a decision that we can make as a government. So there should be parity completely there should be no, no uh, um, separation. There, sh there shouldn't, shouldn't be one, one, one formula for New Providence, one formula for Grand Bahama, another formula for Abaco. No, we'll have to find a way to regularize it across the board. Now, if, 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 uh, if a group leader can go there and they can convince Atlantis to give them $2 million, that's separate and apart from what the government can do. But the seed money itself, yes, um, I, I, I do believe that, um, um, that, that, that should be equally, that should be across the board, fair to all. And, and again, even though you, you might be in Grand Bahama, um, there's no reason why you can't go to Atlantis or go to Bahama or go to Martin South and also ask for sponsorship. Um, okay. 
like I said, the, the, with respect to your facilities, yes, um, of course, there's a need to have called the Tonkanu Shacks, space that, that, that you can use to produce. And, and there was a model put on the table by, by two ministers ago, Minister Pintard. I, I do believe that there was a prototype design put in place where the individual geographical groups can have their museum. And I would suggest that as a part of the museum, you also have a logo shop where you can sell your products, where you can you can do do more retailing, sell um, your mask and your and your, and your headpiece and whatever part of part of, of the costumes that that you might deem necessary to generate revenue. And so again, not only in Grand Bahama but throughout the family islands, to Kishlin point earlier by um, with respect to in ensuring that we have the same level of input and the same level of attention throughout the Bahamas. We also have to look for facilities where they can also construct costumes um, throughout the land and bread of the Bahamas. So very good question. And we'll see, as I said earlier, how, how we can support. And I'll do my best to support in, in any which way um, that I can, as, as I'm allowed to um, under my portfolio. OK. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Next question. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, Anjo and Emily, chairman of the Sooners from Freeport. Uh, first of all, Minister, congratulations on your appointment. You're calling from? I'm from the Swingers John Canoe Group and Community Organization in Freeport. Got you. Yes, yes, I recognize the name. First and foremost, congratulations on your appointment. Thank you. And um, just, just two quick points and a short brief story, um, just to emphasize a point I'd like to give, please, if, if I'm permitted. First of all, um, Junior made mention of, of sponsorship and sponsorship will be generally um, a cry you would hear straight across the board from Grand Bam in the North to Inagua in the South. But we are not looking to, and we can't rely solely on the government for everything. So we're not looking predominantly for government sponsorship, but we'd like an opportunity. I think something that we can do specifically in Grand Bama with government assisted sponsorship is a conversation from the government to some of these industrial companies, for example, Bahama Rock. Bahama Rock has been a company in existence in Grand Bama for over 60 years, but unfortunately Grand Bahama isn't um, benefiting from their presence aside from a few jobs. An example how the prime minister himself um, was able to secure funding for Genesis, as well as the music makers through partnerships with some of the big companies that come in to do business. Perhaps he can look at Grand Bahama, as well as some of the other family islands with some of those companies looking to do business um, in the Bahamas. Perhaps they can be encouraged um, to assist um, you know, organizations in the communities for which they wanna do business. Another point I wanna make, Minister, I've had the opportunity for three consecutive years to attend Carabana in Canada. Mm -hmm. Now, Carabana is a major Caribbean festival um, similar to Carnival. My first visit to Carabana, um, the, the group that I participated with, we took some costumes from, from the Bahamas there to Canada. And while we were admiring the costumes made by the carnival revelers, the carnival revelers were amazed at the costumes that we produce. So it was this mutual respect for creativity. But one thing that I found interesting is these people are quite familiar with Junkanoo and quite familiar with Gombe. And that is where I think we are constantly missing the boat because if we have a partnership between the Ministry of Tourism to promote, even if it's only summer Jonkunu, promote it and advertise it properly, we can take Jonkunu to another level, thereby causing Jonkunu groups themselves to be able to, to create costumes, whether it be paraphernalia, whether it be dolls, whether it be other souvenirs, that we be able to sell the persons that would come to participate and to view our, our off our off parade. But we just need a partnership, like I said, with the government and the Ministry of Tourism to pull off events such as that. 
Um, I, I think if we're able to do something like that, the groups themselves would be able to self-sustain or finance themselves for the main parade, which will be um, during the Boxing Day and the, and the, and the New Year's Day um, um, time. So um, that's just something I'd like the government to, to have, have a look at with a view of, of making it something big and spectacular, similar to what the government pumped in the carnival. If the, junk, if the government can, can um, put a portion of that aside for Junkanoos, I think that would assist in getting us to the next level and hopefully assist us in being um, self-sustaining. Yes, and John, thank you very much. Extremely good points, and and I I, I totally agree. Um, you said you said earlier um, the the Canadians um, or at Carabana they were amazed, amazed, and I, that's what I spoke to earlier. The creativity of the Bahamian artists, creativity. I I don't, I don't believe you, John Canoe, uh who make the, the guys who make the costume, even even from the design to the production. To the performance to compare with any art form anywhere in the world and and the world would admire you and and again while we're here amazed at other art forms and other countries they are they are shocked they are amazed at us and yes to your point with respect to not only bahama rock but any company that comes in you know we have an opportunity in some instances when we have the heads of of of, of, of agreement negotiation where um, a portion can be negotiated to go back to youth sports and culture, education, and and those monies once earmarked should be directed in the the the, the areas that they were earmarked for, um, because as you would note, when an investor invests his money, oftentimes they want an ROI, and and oftentimes you know they give give and give and give and there's no return on their investment. So at some point, we have to find a way where we can be self-sustaining. We have to find a way. Because after a while, even, even this year, um, with the Bahama, with an analysis closing, with all those major hotels closing, there's no way. So we wanted to, we wanted to, to have our own local, locally sponsored parade, where was the money coming from? But if we had the opportunity, like you said, from the Gombe Samba festivals, from, from the other local, uh, a production, we would have enough funds in the kitty to do it ourselves. So let's, let's act as if the money from the sponsors will run out in a short period of time and let's think quickly as to ways as to how we can find ways to make it self-sustaining because I say as, as creative as we are in, in producing these, these marvel out of cardboard, out of crepe paper, our minds can somehow think of ways and, and there may be just one small switch, one small piece of the puzzle that we need to put together or one last thought we need to connect to make this. I know it is, it is valid, multi-billion dollar industry. I believe it is there. We just have to find a way to turn that last screw. We put a last piece of the puzzle in and it's up to you to bring the ideas and us together can make it make make that idea a, a reality. No problem, sir. I, I, I think I think um, like uh, someone mentioned earlier, I, I think if we are able to um, participate in the discussions, I, I think you know that's where you'd have an opportunity to, to the, you know to hear to hear a lot of, of ideas and experiences. So um, it, it's just a matter of being involved in the in the discussion, which I hope the other islands as well as grandmama are left out um, when the time comes. Absolutely, and that's why this, this uh, uh, forum that we're on right now, I must must put this really big time to Charmaine and our team for, for just for all organizing this. We are all on the same floor. We, we, we are throwing ideas out there. We are, I'm listening to what you have to say. Others are listening. We're brainstorming together. So this is a, 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 a think tank where we're documenting our thoughts. When I, when I spoke to, to the culture department, you know, we have, a, we have an art form um, fabric that we use, I guess, Androsia. And it's done using, that's an art form. I happened to, to, to wear a, sock, uh, a pair of socks at the meeting and it was almost like a Junkano print. So again, we have boutique, we have Androsia. Why can't we have some Junkano? You know, you know the, the funky, crazy socks that everyone's wearing all over the world. 
the, the funky necktie. I spoke to, to the Japanese Prime Minister every year. He comes up with this with a funky jacket, an official jacket that he wear at a staff party at the Ministry of Works. And it's always like, wow, I want one like that. I want one like that. So again, as an organization, why can't you come up with your own form of your own fabric, your own, your own, your own, uh, 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 whatever medium it is using Junkano print besides the Junkano doll. And, and of course, make it worldwide. Someone spoke earlier to having Junkano costumes on display. And I always thought that that, that would have been very powerful to have in some museum. The 1968 Olympic torch that was in Mexico, that was sent, you know where, where that is right now? That is in San Salvador, in the Bahamas. They shipped that and that is on display in San Salvador as a, as a part of the local tour. I, I always thought that some of our standing costumes could be shipped to other countries. Chunkanoo with a storyline, inviting people to come to the, to, to the Bahamas. So having those magnificent costumes in different countries with an invitation to come, a scale down version for sale. And the same way and John talk about the Canadians marveling, I'm telling you, you'll have the same reaction all over the world. And again, that's an opportunity for us to monetize and to put money in the pocket of the small man. Okay, I think we have a question from Doc. Go ahead, Doc. Uh, good night, everybody. Um, congratulations, Minister Lewis. Thank you, Doc. I, I think everybody's excited um, with your appointment and the possibilities. Uh, we know you're going to be dedicated because shoot, you were Olympian already. So you have to have a certain level of dedication to Uncle Olympic. Push that okay. in order to. to Make it that grand stage. Yes. Um, I think a couple of points. I listened in for a couple of minutes and um, to the point that, that Chauncey made about protecting John Canoe and not allowing to, you know, people to benefit from our, which is in essence our intellectual property, because you know, the ones before us um, are now us put in the work and we should benefit from the usage of any entity outside of us, right? So that question was asked <clears throat> on the UNESCO committee, myself along with um, Kishlane Smith, who was also a member of the committee along with some other people, Ali Nash Ferguson, um, Percival Francis, Henry Higgins, um, Dion Miller, who's the yeah. chairman of JCNP, um, um, Nicole King, it's several of us that, that you know, did the work for the, the, the transcription with UNESCO. UNESCO that yeah. question was asked and it's, it's presently being researched to make sure that we would have some legal recourse yes. once um, it's, it's, it becomes ours exclusively and we should be able to protect it, right? Absolutely. Um, that's one thing. As a matter of fact, I just asked her the question and she said she was gonna do some research on it. Secondly, as it relates to um, um, sponsorship, and you know somebody had mentioned um, buildings that that people ask this um, exorbitant amount of money for um, just for for cultural you know just for a jungle group to be able to use these facilities. A lot of times these companies, these businesses are not even using these buildings. But I think one way that we can we can meet some happy medium, we have a, a, a taxing system in place right now, right, with uh, with VAT for companies. So in essence, um, what we might be able to explore is the possibility of, of some sort of tax write-off with companies that give opportunities or participate in, 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 in uh, the development of culture in the country, like John Canoe. If you have an abandoned building that you're not using, right? a lot of these, these people are not using the buildings, but they should be able to say, okay, if you support John Canoe or support um, any one of our cultural expressions, you can use that money that you would have been getting in cash as a sort of a tax tax write-off, just you know, because that's the way they do it with stuff in the US. Just something to think about. Yes. Um, yes. Sec and a third point before I go back to my corner. Um, 
somebody had mentioned that we can't always go to the government and ask for money. And I agree, you know, um, we, have a, we have a lot of A, a plus artists involved in Junkanoo, like world-class artists involved in Junkanoo. And I think we need that, that avenue. We need that, that stage in order to, to show it to, on a grander scale to the international community so they can see that what we have. I don't think Junkanoo is in its present form um, can do that in its present format. It has to be, and we've been preaching this for years, in a, in a festival format. You have to have this um, in a festival form where people come in and they can spend a week, a week and a half, two weeks to a Junkanoo festival as opposed to two parades where we basically, the parades now are just money pits. You're pouring money into two parades with no return. We have a couple of people that make a couple of dollars, but that's, um, you know, that's, that's, that's not even scratching the surface of the cost of putting yeah. on a parade. Yeah. So if we change the format where we could probably have participation from people coming in, right? Where you allow John Kuna groups to sell their wares and sell costumes and let them participate, it becomes a big event. And you can recoup some of the money that you would, you would have invested in the parade. But it has to be a festival form. It can't just be we competing with each other and the millions of dollars go down the drain, the costumes are cast um, on the garbage pile the next day yeah. and we don't get any return. That's insane in my opinion. Yes. But there are ways to do it. We just need to get off of this. Oh, we were doing this this way for all these years. We need to get away from that and, and move towards um, you know, making it an industry where people can make a living doing this because they deserve to be paid. We have A1 artists in Junkanoo and they're just being paid morsels as opposed to what their true worth really is. So that's just my contribution. Doc, you're absolutely right. Um, before you speak, um, audience to know, we have a lot of people watching and sending you congratulations. And we want them to know if you're watching, go ahead, like and share. We want us to get out, out there. We want the Bahamians to know that we have a fantastic Olympian <laughs> in charge of our junk. And like he said previously, we, uh, we are going to become known in the world, not just uh, on that aspect, but also as junk new Olympians. And with us, we just have also chiming in. I see Mr. Quentin Barabas Woodside, just okay. some of the call. We have Mr. Chris Justillian, we have Ian Williams. So we have Adley, we have a few persons just logging in and out, Minister, as we're speaking. So you'll be all of them on screen. So they are just popping in and out. Also, my co-host here, Mr. Kevin Paparazzi. So again, if you're watching this wonderful broadcast, we want you to go ahead, share, put your questions down in inbox and let us hear what you have to say. Go ahead, Minister. Thank you. <laughs> I think Barabba is showing us. He's showing us his uh, Tonkumu City. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, Good night. How y'all doing? Hey, hey Barabba. You're, you're trying to find out, figure out ways to, you to monetize, make some money from this whole thing. Because, you know, one of the things that yes. Dr. Marshall spoke to earlier, not only do we have world-class artists, A artists uh, involved, the amount of time that you put in, that you, the amount of time that you put into your work, my goodness, if you were to be paid for that, and yes, it must be in, in an art form where where it, it is not is more than a day, where it's continuous, where you can generate revenue. And I, I dare say, Junkanoo Parade will perhaps more have more international celebrities present watching than any other festival that we have. Outside of maybe the IWA talking three championship that we have in Nassau. But other than that, when you look in all these, you, you can see a Michael Jordan, you, you, you can see a a, 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 a Taro Ocho Cinco. You can see those celebrities from overseas. They come here and they plan their vacation time around Junkano. And maybe it's a, um, people like 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 um, um, Platinum Nights in Grand Bahama. Some of those other groups. They 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 are Miami Dolphin fanatics. Those, those people who who knows you may be able to stretch your, your wings overseas, international borders, and, and get some sponsorship from them. You go to their to their shows and you you put on some of their halftime show and they put something into your local parade. We have been in the NBA. We have we have been in Major League Baseball. Um, why can't we somehow advocate and see if we can get those international? We should also put something in the junk canoe. 
And again, that's a way of finding the new investment. And then we have to find a way. Really, we really have to find a way to be self-sustaining. Because at some, some, at some point, as I indicated earlier, it becomes a market, unless we could find a way to make it profitable. It certainly can be a multi, multi-billion dollar industry. Quentin, I see the hand up. Yeah, um, first of all, congratulations. And I'm glad uh, to have someone like you in culture sitting in that chair. So I, uh, I want to congratulate you. Thank you. Um, yeah, we, we do have to find a way. And we, but, but reaching there, we need to work together. We, mind you, we were, we were on our, well on our way. But every time we make a step forward, if people see we fighting and not together, no one is going to invest in us. And that's a big issue we have with, with us. We have to stand as one, one voice and stand together. All right. I, I've been traveling all over the world with Junkano, all over the world, carrying, when you say platinum night, that is junior. I, I just, I had junior with, with me in Savannah, Georgia many years ago. Um, he's like a son of mine. And, you know, we, we, we carry people from Abaco, Exuma, um, Cat Island, um, you right down to the to, 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 um, Harbor Island, right now to Savannah, Georgia. And we finding a way to reach couple million people, couple million people in another couple of days, couple million. And I'm not joking with this because for the last 19 years, we traveled to St. Patrick's Day Festival where we play for millions and millions and millions of people. Um, the pandemic is here now. So we have to find a way. That word, find a way, that is powerful right now. Find a way to continue to reach the people and for them to continue coming here. And right now on the 17th and the 16th and the 17th of March, we find a way to reach a couple million people. Um, just the other day, we found a way with this pandemic to reach a couple of million people with, with Shamin, um, with the drive through. Um, we have to be together, though, you know, and I didn't see nothing was wrong with that. We were doing everything within within the protocol and nothing was wrong with that. But we got stopped and shut down. We need when we do something, we need the authorities and other people to, to, to look at it first before they shut it down, before they say no. It's like, you don't love it. If we doing something, you don't love it. So we need to be on board and we appreciate, we appreciate um, the protocols and everything. But if we find a way to do it within decency, I think we should, uh, you know, continue to do it. Find a way, but we need to do this together. All right, with this pandemic, we need to find a way. Yes. And that's what I'm continuing you trying to do, find a way. I appreciate it. My, my, um, I don't know if you're all hearing me well, but um, the audio was a little fuzzy when you were speaking, but oh, I, I'm on board with what you're saying. We have to find a way, we have to stick together to make it happen. Barabbas, Barabbas uh, a true word has never been spoken. Um, first of all, let me say, let me say uh, thanks to you. Uh, Dr. Miles Monroe speaks to five level of leadership. Um, the bottom level is leadership based on position. You just you just appointed the president, so you are, that's it. But the fifth level and the most powerful level of leadership is when you can produce leaders. Um, Correct. When you can produce leaders to carry on. That's the ultimate, that's the penultimate level of leadership. And when you can develop persons like, like a, a platinum night leader, like other group leaders, um, you're building the industry. And you're talking about togetherness. Powerful. If we all pull together because at the end of the day you know yeah you 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 were the big fish in the pond but at the end of the day everybody goes from hungry but if you could if you can find a way to come together and say look we have billions of dollars we can make if we could stop fighting each other if we can pull together as a unit there are millions that we can make and now we can share but you would not make that unless you come together first put those creative minds together Invite the business component. You must have the business component in. When I see you go there, you, perhaps you have your studio, you're selling your, your goat skin drum, you're selling your headpiece and so forth. We need, to, we need to expand on that. It goes beyond the parade. Dr. Marcy spoke to that earlier. It should go beyond just the parade. 
the fire in the belly is going to be I, so we again uh, unity togetherness if you put all of your minds and all of your resources together and figure about figure the business aspect of it that's one of the hardest thing for us to pull together as a unit once you figure that out you now have money that can be uh, uh, divided or shared between all with enough to flip over. But your, the key word is must find a way, push ego aside, push me, 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 me aside. Yes, of course there's bragging rights. Everybody wanna to, to be the best group. But at the end of the day, unless you can put your minds together, the monetizing of John Canoe to the maximum level that we can reach, you never get there as long as we continue to fight. So together, put your minds together and let's figure this thing out. I don't have the answers. I'm here to listen. I'm here, like I said, I'm here to learn. Um, but once you bring your sensible proposals to me, it makes sense, it makes business sense, then we can we can push our resources behind it and, and see how we can, can manifest it into cash. Okay, oh, Minister. Online that is so excited that you are in this position. My phone is blowing up. Mm -hmm. I have questions three persons are asking, but first and foremost, my my co-host, Mr. Paparazzi, can't really unmute his mic because he says he's at some place and they're making a lot of noise in the background. But this is the first meeting he has been in with a minister of youth sports and culture. And so we have to thank you up. We got to give him a round of applause for that one. Look here, um, I'm honored. I'm 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 honored to be here with you guys. I, mean, I can tell you the, 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 the expression the, 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 the expression. I'm, I'm gonna tell you from where I'm sitting. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Robert. From where I'm sitting, a lot of people, a lot of people I'm happy. Um where you sitting, sir. But I'm 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 here to support, I'm here to facilitate, I'm I'm, I'm here to open doors for you. Yes, the word on the street, the word on the street, they are happy or uh, where you're sitting. Trust me. And I, I, I am because you're a cultural person and you understand. Absolutely, absolutely. Can't see. But what, I, what I would like to do is invite you um, here probably one day next week so you can see exactly what we're doing um, for St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Uh, and then you'll have a great understanding. Um, I like that word which you use and I like the topic, find a way. Let's find a way. Find a way. Yes, and, and I've, I've supported your, I, I've been to Horseshoe Drive to your, your facility to buy drums and so forth years ago. And I'm sure that your business would have grown uh, by leaps and bounds since then. So stay focused, keep it on. Chanzi, I see you, you have a question. Yeah. Um, I just want to extend on something I think I heard the white said, Doc. Um, we get exemption. But John Canoe supplies, you know, for our contact and our rods and paper and stuff. But John Canoe supplies extends on further than that. Mm -hmm. um, you buy a three thousand dollar Sousa phone from the states, you got to now spend about a uh, couple hundred dollars to bring it in. You said, what was that equipment? What was that? What was that you talking about? A horn, a Sousa phone. Can you hear me? Yes, I heard you. Wow. Right. And come uh, goes back to you know the groups trying to make money for themselves. Um, as simple as a as a vehicle, if you want to, a lot of us be getting in the following the NASA trend of trying to use our practices to make a couple of dollars. Yeah. But you know if you want to buy some beverages and buy some food to sell out, you got to get people trucks and all of that. And not every time you're going to be using a particular person truck. So eventually. That person is gonna get tired of you using their vehicle to do this. We have uh, rushes we wanna do, you gotta use this person's vehicle. So uh, even as a vehicle, we, we can look at John Canoe Supply. Tools is John Canoe Supply. So if you could, we, and we've been trying to, to get this for a little while now, where we do get the exemption on the, on the what we now call John Canoe Supply, is it possible that being a registered John Kunu group, once you sign in every year that you're registered for the upcoming for upcoming parade, can you get an extension on some of the ex exemptions on, on other things other than just the contact, the rods and stuff like that? That, that is certainly a, um, a good point. And it's a conversation that we certainly raised with um, the Ministry of Finance 
because at the end of the day, inland revenue, um, they are very reasonable. And, um, you know, we, we have declared special economic recovery zones in Africa and Grand Bahama, and, and we've been, been uh, given concessions toward the, toward the land and better the Bahamas as, as best as we can. So it's a discussion that we, we, we can have with the Ministry of Finance, and of course the Minister, the Prime Minister himself, who was an Ava Junkanoa. Um, so I'm sure he understands that the, the you call it the Sousa Horn, we don't make those in the Bahamas. So if we don't make it here, um, uh, I believe we should have a way to, to be able to, to get it here easier. So again, all of the challenges you may have, all of the issues that you face, document it. Put it, put it in writing. Let me present it. Let me, let me, let me on your behalf, um, be an advocate. At least make the presentation. Put forth the argument. And who knows? I may be able to get the, uh, the John Canoe Committee in front, of, uh, in front of cabinet where you can make a presentation. You, could, you can tell the cabinet of the Bahamas and present all the, all the issues and um, come, come with a proposal and we'll see how we can support it moving forward. I don't know if the John Canoe Committee um, ever presented in cabinet before. But, but I'm sure, I'm sure um, uh, there, there is a, there's a white paper being prepared now by the, by the ministry. Um, uh, and I don't want to say too much. It does it act in your favor. And at the end of the day, um, you have to put, put an act in place that will protect and promote John Cano even more at the, at the local level where you, you receive more benefit. So that at the end of the day, all the concessions that other art forms um, realizes recognizing that this is our biggest cultural event, then yes, um, things should, should certainly work in your favor. But it, it is at the moment above my pay grade, but I understand and it's certainly a conversation worth having on your behalf. Minister, another question that was asked online from Mr. Gino Roll. He says, on your mandate, can you uh, suggest, under your mandate, you can suggest a cultural Junkanoo village, a, a village that is set up where we can have John Canoe really uh, year round and it can be a good uh, tourist attraction too. That's one of the things that, um, uh, that, that was brought up on one of the committees that I was on that I formed for us to have a village for persons to visit. Uh, you know, we have visitors 365 days of a year. So if we have some place that is set up where they can visit, like how we have the botanical gardens, we have Atlantis and we have all these other places, where persons will be able to see our culture alive and well 365 days of the year. I totally agree. Yes, yep. yes. And I know there were some proposals, there were some proposals on the table by private entities to create a cultural village. They had a, a, a John Canoe Russian name as a part um, of, of the development. So yes, um, but again, the National John Canoe Committee, um, of course, must formulate that. Um, unless there's, there's a, an opportunity for public-private partnership. But again, as, as, a, as a National John Canoe Committee, that is a proposal that you can put where you can now find a way to generate revenue. Like for instance, the National Stadium, something like a National Stadium. Why can't a group, you have funds, why, why can't a group like any one of the large groups Book out the stadium, questions are free to get in. We, we put down the, the protective covering and you have your, your almost like a country, generate revenue. So at the end of the day, once you would have had this, this cultural village that would be dedicated to, towards John Canoe, it's a source of constant revenue stream. So yes, um, I would be an advocate, but the presentation, the, the pros and cons must be presented by you. And then I'll, I'll see what I can do to take it to the next level. I'll, I'll do my best to take it to the next level. Yes, talk. Okay, um, to sort of piggyback on what you're talking about. Um, well, it's, it's twofold again, because I listened to what Barabbas had to say and um, to go again on what, you, what you're saying. <clears throat> I think we have a lot, of, a lot of problems we have in John Canoe, uh, self-inflicted. Right, the self-inflicted stuff, and and we know it. You know that that's the, the elephant in the room. It's, it's self-inflicted. Um, the unity thing has a lot of um, mistrust among John Canoes, right? Because, and I think rightfully so, because over the years there've been a lot of exploitation of talent, and people just don't trust um, 
you know, certain things. And rightfully so. When we have conversations with the regular John Canoe, that's 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 a that's a popular thing. You know, they want to do this, but they don't trust this person. They want to do that, they don't trust this person because they've been used in the past, they've not been properly compensated for certain things. That's one thing. We've been talking for a couple of years about forming a John Canoe Commission, right? Which is a central body in charge of everything John Canoe. Not the NJC, not the JCNP, not all these other letters that they put together. One central body that's in charge of localized, that the local John Canoe scenes um, would be in charge of internationalization of John Canoe, everything John Canoe, right? It doesn't have to be ran by, not even by, by John Canoe, because John Canoe people, because you need somebody that's going to run that with a business sense, right? Because fundraising will be yes. the, 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 the biggest issue is fundraising. So you need people with those type, type skills. You have to populate it with, with professional people who can do their jobs. Not saying that John Canoe people can't do it, but if we're going to do it, um, and like you said, it's a billion dollar industry, potentially, we need people who are going to be in charge of doing certain things that are professionals. And we have to look at it like that. It definitely has um, that potential. I believe that because I don't think there's any other expression on this planet like John Canoe. We can go against anybody right now, right now, and line up with anybody and outperform, out beautify, out everything them in any country. I believe that. So we need to, like you said, put a, a, a value on that. But we have to put people in place so that we can realize that potential. We can't just have anybody there just because, okay, I could do John Canoe, I won't be in charge of this. No, it don't work like that. If it's gonna be a business, if we're gonna make it a, a viable industry, you have to have people in place that can maximize the potential that John Canoe has. But again, it has to be centralized because we're all over the place. This one has a vision, this other, committee has a vision, that one has another vision, and we're just going around in circles. So we would have to go under one vision, one focus, one voice, so that we can maximize all our potential. Yep, yeah, you're right. In, in some instances, when you're looking at monetizing it from the commission's perspective or, or, or authority perspective, the, 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 group, the group concept have to fall away at that level and, and bring in the business component. And once you have a strong business component, then all of the groups can still benefit. But again, that level of, of mistrust that we have, and that's not only in John Cano, don't feel bad. That's not only in John Cano. We have that, of course, a little breath of our, of our archipelago. But again, we, we, we think about the craft itself, but the business side. And I, I'll speak in personal experience. My father was one of the best builders in this country. He, he, he could build a car out of wood that you can drive. But when it comes to the business side of the construction industry, I won't say he sucked, but he's bad. He had the business side just was, was, was a fall away. So perfecting your craft is one thing, but having that business side that those persons who may not necessarily be the um, can't pace, who can't shake the cowbell, who can't um, beat a drum or dance or do anything, but they understand the business of John Canoe and they know how to monetize it. So we have to step outside of the performance box. We have to to break away from all of the separating, separation, all of the infighting, and just put your head together. And if it's a jungle commission, a jungle authority, whatever it is, think about it from the business perspective. And then you have to look at Junkano, look at parity from the from the large city to the small community. Make sure all the groups across the land and of the Bahamas benefits equally. Great question. Uh, Minister, one of the things on, on my platform, I have always tried to be um, fair across the board, especially with dealing with uh, New Providence Group and most of the islands group. I tend, I've been doing this actually on my own along with my team for the past five years under the media aspect of it, coming from the administrative end for 15 to 20 years under the JCMP. And so, you know, we've been toting this on our shoulder We've been trying to keep a John Canoe alive and well from all aspects, just to make sure that we keep our music and, and everything that we know in the airs of Bohemian persons. And so, you know, I was really ecstatic when I, I found that you were going to be minister because I know you're a very comfortable person to talk to. 
and I noticed, you know, sometimes you would watch our shows and stuff, so you know um, the plot, the, the platform and what we have been doing to keep this thing. We are making sure everybody, you know, knows what we are doing. So again, thank you for having a listening ear for us. We have so many persons responding nine and, and asking a lot of questions. It's impossible for me to, to be checked. I, I promise to come back and, and do this again. And, yeah. and even if, if we can, at, at the end of the day, a, a round table where we can have a face-to-face, -face, I'll be happy to sit in and, and hear. But again, we have to document. We have to have a playbook for which to follow and timelines established so that we can, we can measure our success, make adjustments along the way. So at the end of the day, you know, you want to be able to be able to feed your family, take care of yourself financially. And, and then you want to grow the industry. You want to make sure that there's a feeder program, a feeder system. Yes, you have the B categories, you have the scrap group, but you also have Junior John Canoe and you have other islands of the Bahamas where we must spread it out. Yeah, so I, I make myself available, and, and again, I'm here to learn, I'm here to understand, and most of all, I'm here to support. Do we have any more questions? Go ahead, John, you have another question? Yes, good evening again. Yeah. Um, my question is to you, Mr. Minister. I have two quick questions. It's touching on the legends circle, the legends of John Canoe, and insurance for leaders um, after they reach a certain age, medical insurance or something. Um, what I'm saying is, uh, you have some some guys and ladies in John Canoe who've been in John Canoe from they were like five years old. Now they're in their early 40s, late 30s. They made so much impact on John Canoe. And I feel like you have some people making it to the legend circle who haven't spent half of the time that some of these guys have made it in, but um, they're saying you've got to be a certain age to make it in a legend circle. My thing is, I feel it's something we need to change. If you, if you have made a, a great impact over 20 years, being a drummer or a bell or something, and passing it down to other people, I feel you should give some of these people their flowers while they're alive and not try to see if they can reach a certain age before they get their flowers. You know, that's my take on the legend circle. Um, where, where in, in, Instant with the, the the insurance, I know a lot of leaders after they, they reach the age of 50, 60, you know, some type of illness start to come on in some way medically. And you have a lot of leaders that cannot afford the medical insurance or, or, or afford to go and get treatments and do whatever. I I, I, know, I have known one or two leaders in Grand Bahama when they was a certain age. They couldn't find the money to even go and see the doctor, but they were they were leading Jonkano groups for, for about 50 years, 40, 50 years, with no help, no money, no nothing. So I would like to see us put in place um, for some of these leaders who take on the stress and ambassadors to the country, some way we can help them out after they reach a certain age and look out for them in a way medically and, and with some type of insurance nationally. Uh, that is that is so important, and, and, I, and I support that initiative. 100%. Um, uh, what 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 uh, defines a legend? Again, that's up to you and, and the organization. But there are persons who are who would have been who have had major impact after only a short time in the game. And yes, you have lost a lot. I mean, uh, Dr. Slimy Thompson, uh, uh, Kool Aid. Um, I remember. I remember well, a motorboat in Grand Bahama. I, I remember a gentleman who used to work with me at the Ministry of Works. I think he died had a heart attack on, on the parade. Chris Moxie, um, Chris, Chris and I worked together at the Ministry of Works, and, and I saw Chris a few days before he died, and that was that was shocking. So yes, some endowment, some insurance, uh, investment funds should be set aside. Some endowment plan, um, plans should be set aside because you rush in. That's wear and tear. You can't load on your shoulder. You have you have neck problems. You have spinal problems. You have you have joint problems. Um, even in track and field, I went to the stadium uh, on 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 Tuesday. And I saw two of the coaches that I, I left on the track as young men, they can hardly walk. Knees gone. Yep. And, and other athletes, there no insurance in place, no investment plan. And, and that's why it's important for us to understand the business aspect of it. Because we should have some endowment plan, some investment plan, some insurance plan moving down the road. See, I, I just saw the, the good deacon, um, Donald Duncan, um, again from Grand Bahama. When, 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 when the music hit in, in his belly, he 
he's on the hard time on the hard road dancing in the straight shoes. And I'm sure eventually that is gonna affect his, his knee, his joints. And I remember having a conversation with his daughters at some time. They said, wait a minute, daddy's supposed to be home in bed sick. We're gonna continue, we see this man jumping up and down, up and down, <laughs> back out of place, near the place, but the music in your belly, Charmaine, just, just had him going and he couldn't stop. The thing is, there's a physical uh, stress that it puts on the body. It wears you down. And Thomas, to your point, there should be some insurance. And again, the, the, the Duncan Commission, um, the association, even the government, we should find a way to have some endowment plan, have some insurance moving forward because it should not fall on the family alone. And a lot of times, we don't understand it. We end up sacrificing your entire life. And at the end of the day, just like an old lame horse, you put them on the pasta and they've forgotten. So we have to find a way to, to um, close the gap or to fill that void to ensure that you're taken care of down the road. But again, it speaks to understanding the business side of it and only understanding the business side and monetizing it. Would you have something to put away and you have something to invest from the insurance side as well as from the endowment plan? Yes, thank you. All right, we have another question. Mr. Duncan, Donald, oh, sir, hold on, Chancy, one moment. Donald Duncan, you have to unmute his mic. Unmute your mic for us, please. First of all, I'd just like to congratulate the minister on his appointment. And I was listening actually on, on Facebook um, before I was given the, the, the in. Um, and I, I'm, I'm hearing you and, and one of the good things is uh, we just need the partnership with government to make things possible, um, to remove roadblocks and, and any other impediments that may be in our way. A um, couple of things folks already mentioned, because one of the things that should happen with all groups, I think once groups are registered, they should be made um, um, nonprofits right away, given a certificate. Um, and all they have to do is renew that certificate each year. And that certificate, as Chauncey was asking earlier, that certificate should guarantee them some basic rights and privileges. And then it would be easier for us to do the, some of the, the, the things we need to do. But as, as everybody was saying, and, and I agree with you 100%, one of the biggest problems, and there was another gentleman saying one of the problems we have is ourselves. And I think we, what we have to do is simply move ahead of that, okay? Let's move from that. And let's now move to unification. I know we, we are, we are Junkanoo. And one of the biggest things we have is that, comp that competitive spirit. But we could be competitors at the same time, all of us. I've said over and over, there is no reason why Junkanoo groups can't be bringing in a million dollars a year. And I ain't talking about gross. I'm talking about net, right? And somebody asks what, the, what, the, what the, 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 the missing link is. And I will say it again. The missing link, marketing. That's marketing. Once we get the mark of this thing sorted out, and I agree with you, there has to be proper management in place. Like most industries, you find a lot of the junkanoos, junkanoo for junkanoo. But you have to get managers, you have to get you have to get law people who are able to make sure that the business side of this thing functions. I don't have distrust because when we set up when we set up agreements and licenses and stuff like that, like uh, Saxons, you license your t-shirt. Okay? Ain't nobody supposed to be able to print that t-shirt unless you give them the right to. And this is something in this, this palm is what we need to start doing. We need to start prosecuting people who go and take other people's licensed goods and, 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 and parlay it as their own. Because that, you know, that, that's, that's something, if Junkun or any other thing is supposed to grow in the country, the, the, the different things that happen that take away from people being able to properly make money needs to be removed. And those people need to be penalized to let people know 
you could do it yourself, right? Why, why take someone else's idea? And I've said it over and over, we need to put Junkanoo to the point where we expose it to the world and we market it. And I've, I've said, this is simple. Um, Chinese and Japanese love Junkanoo. I don't know why it is exactly. I know it has something to do with the drumming. And, and you could speak with Isaiah Taylor on this um, because he confirmed my idea. I had this idea for years. Isaiah Taylor says, all we need to do is show up in Japan and we'll all come back home millionaires. Of course, we have to carry the right people there to make sure we don't leave anything behind. But, <laughs> but you know, I mean, that, that, that ain't difficult to do, right? We can market Junkanoo to China and Japan, just like how they market in us. They love our culture. We can, we can buy products from them and we can sell our culture can be our exchange product, okay? And once we do that, we don't have to get there right now, but we can put it out there for them to purchase now, okay? I've seen a lot of, I mean, a lot of the, 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 the virtual stuff that went up. Those things are marketable, okay? We just need to fry, find the person who can get us that mass to get where we need to go. I, I see you and I totally agree with you, um, Deacon Duncan. Um, we do have corporate laws now in the Bahamas. Um, and, and, and again, you must register. You register your product, you have it mm -hmm. patented, you have it copyrighted, and then it becomes your intellectual property. It becomes your property. Right. So right. you use that. They now have to pay for reproduction um, of your, or, or for use of your intellectual property. So there is a way, and it's already in law. Copyright laws already has been passed. Um, you need to have these, these, you have your lawyer on board, um, register your product, because um, I'm sure that the local company, the fabric company, um, Bahari, you know. Right. Excellent, I, excellent example. Exactly. So, so they, make, they make money on a regular basis. And that's Bahari. Whenever you go to Bahari, makes money whenever their streets are sold. So why can't that happen um, in Junkanoo? Um, to your point about registering as a nonprofit organization, yes, the individual group can register as a nonprofit organization, but the overall corporation can be registered for profit. Where you're making the money as an over, at, at, at the overall umbrella level, where the, at, the, at the lower level, you have the opportunities to, to get the business easier and to your commission um, or to your authority, which is for, for profit, you now have a system where you can make money from, from that aspect um, without breaking any any of the laws of the land. So again, the opportunities are there, but we keep coming up to this thing, trust, putting our heads together, putting our minds together and, and looking beyond the individual groups and looking at, looking at the big picture. We're looking at this thing from 10 feet up as opposed to 50,000 feet up. So you go up and you look at, it from, look at the big picture. And I'm sure, like you said earlier, the last piece of the puzzle is all we need um, to make it happen. So we have to find a way. And, and back to my, what I said, Quinton, we have to find a way. It's right there. We just need to find a way and make it happen. All right, all right, Minister, we are winding down. Question, another question? Go ahead, Grant Chauncey. That's a, that's a, a, a quick question. Um, that even though it's, you know, it's COVID time and you got a social distance and cover up masks and everything, but do you have in the near future I know you're, you know, you're, you're very busy, but do you have in the near future time where you're scheduling meetings um, with, um, with the leaders and stuff in Grand Bahama and in, in the other island? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, what I did this week to be impactful, I didn't meet with all of, all of the, the, the staff in Nassau in one open, one big room. I've met with department heads and, and, and the administration teams, youth, sports, culture, my, my PS, my undersecretary in smaller settings. Once I would have covered all of all of the various aspects in terms of the structure of the ministry and learn, um, I mean the learning curve is short. I have to learn quickly. 
And then I'll be meeting with the various federations, sporting federation, the various cultural groups uh, and setting like we're meeting now. So of course, I, that is a part of the, of the, of the plan. Um, I was appointed a minister right in the middle of our midterm budget debate. So that have me kind of tied up, but every, every day um, from eight o'clock in the morning until like 9.30, because parliament starts at 10, I'm in meetings, meeting the various groups um, or the various sectors of the ministry. And, and again, between 1.30 and 2.30, I'm in meetings to get back to parliament for three o'clock. So after we should be finished with budget debate by Thursday this week. So the following week, I'll have more flexibility to meet with the various cultural group, um, the various sporting federation, um, the various youth group to ensure that everybody is addressed. And um, we spread thin, we have um, a lot of work to do, but I believe that once we, once we meet in these small settings and we put our heads and our minds together and we are working towards a common, uh, one common goal, I think all, all will be well. So, so Quentin, we do, Chancey, we do have a lot to do, but it's my commitment to meet with, with the group in smaller settings and be able to hear, take note, understand, devise the plan, activate the plan and, and, and together make it happen. That was good, that was good. All right, Minister, we've come to the end of our show for the night. We, we know you have a long rest of the week. So once again, on behalf of the junk in the world, I should say that all of the leaders here present tonight, and of course, FIE's Junkanoo Rush team, my co-host, Mr. Paparazzi, my producer, Ms. Bright Gold, and of course, my CEO and twin, Brenton Burol, we'd like to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Because you know, we had to lock you down. All right. <laughs> but one thing I want you to know that we always will support you. We always have your back. We believe in what you stand for. You know, and from my point of view, I don't think they could have chosen anybody better to fill this position. So again, we thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Is there anything that you want to say before we sign off for the night? And for those who are watching, please go ahead and share this so you can get some information and, and some insight. If you want to, you can still leave comments because the minister, I'm, I'm going to take all this information and get it to him. Yes. So go ahead. Let, let, me, let me say it once again, I mean to you and your team, uh, how grateful I am. Uh, to you for, for this platform, um, being a constant awareness um, of John Canoe, and to all of you leaders, um, thank you so much for keeping this very, very important culture alive. I know it is a labor of love. You, you, you're not benefiting, it, benefiting from, from it the way you would like to, monetary, or, um, or you should be benefiting it from it. But I do believe that over time, we will find a way um, in the meantime, I, I don't know how you do it, um, but being an athlete, I know what it is to be dedicated. I know what it is to be committed. I know what it is to be focused. And you've shown that, you've demonstrated that. And your commitment, we have this very unique, one of a kind art form still very much alive. So I'm here again to hear you. I'm here to partner with you. I'm here to support you. I'm here to facilitate you and as, as best as I can. And I'm also here to learn most of all you continue to, to um, dialogue with me. Let me know what the issues are and let's work. I, I'm, I'm ready to work. Um, come, come with focus plan, the timelines attached and um, with structured plans that we can work on. <clears throat> we have milestones to measure. We can make adjustments. And at the end of the day, once um, we, we, we stay focused, I believe that we realize our goal. So you all have a safe weekend. And this is my first forum of, of this um, kind since becoming the minister. I've, I've participated in, in two or three sporting uh, events already. The first uh, uh, round table forum, pretty much um, Zoom forum. And it was certainly a delight to be a part of this venture. And only because it's exciting because I'm, I'm not a night person. Now I'm up 3.34 in the morning, but by 7.30, 8 o'clock, I'm in my bed, I'm sleeping. So, but one thing that can keep me awake is John Cano. So once yeah. again, thank you. And I look forward to the partnership moving forward. All right, Minister. And like we say at FIE's Junkunu Rush, feel it in your belly. Thank you so much. Everybody okay. have a great night and a great weekend. Please be safe. Same to you. Safe weekend to all. Okay, good night, all. Thank you, Charmaine. You're doing a great job, my dear. Say a prayer and go to bed. Okay, good night, everyone. Oh no, got work to do. Can't go to bed yet.
Good night, John. Go to bed. All right.